I might have put our one point lead at the top of the table in jeopardy, as we accepted an £800,000 bid for Fomba on deadline day. He has been playing as a rotation option, but I think our squad depth is good enough to survive without him, until his backup got injured for five weeks. Hopefully we can find his replacement in our youth intake later in today's episode. Fortunately, Auxerre lost to Pau before we played Dunkirk, and thanks to Brea Moreno, we won to give ourselves a four point lead. However, Lobry also suffered an injury in the match, meaning after the sale of Fomba, we are now running very low on fit centre mids. We lost our next game 2-0, meaning our four point lead was cut back to one, but we could finally give a debut to Divine in the 76th minute, who is back from international duty. He started the next game and got the assist of the assist for Benjamin to score the only goal of the game, before then scoring his first goal for the club in the following match. We then beat Paris 2-0 as Orcs are lost, meaning we start today's episode four points clear of our rivals, and could extend it to seven as we play against them first. Also, as predicted, I could not stick to the upload schedule in week two of the channel, which isn't great, but I can explain why. Um, we'll talk about it a little bit later on. I want to focus on this Orcs Air game first. Now, the team, for the most part, has been playing pretty well. Diara, though, has sustained an injury out for three weeks, which is frustrating because he's been one of our better players. Worryingly, we are going to bring on uh, Ahmed onto the pitch, and he's not played great. But finally, you get to see how good Divine is on the pitch. Now, he's finally able to play for us. So, after this game, there will be 10 games to go this season and a seven point gap with 10 games to go surely must hand us the title you know if we fail to win the title or even get promoted from that point it would be really really frustrating and a huge bottle job as we just hit the post early on in this game lose the game obviously it goes back to a one point deficit and that then makes things a little bit more difficult for us so today has some huge implications Batu Benzica already on a yellow card that is a little bit concerning very early on in this game fingers crossed he uh, keeps his discipline for the rest of the match. Benjamin, who's been in the goals in between episodes, is now in the assists. He puts the ball across the six-yard area to Divine, who gets there first for his second goal for the club. I think he was well worth the wait. Hopefully, he'll be able to build some good form here at the end of the season and hopefully bring it into season two, where we might be playing in League 1 or we could be stuck in this same division if things go terribly. But I don't think things are going to go bad for us, as uh, Orcs there are bringing the ball forward right now, and they're actually just carving through our defence into the penalty area. The cross is blocked by Appiah though and he can give the ball to Benjamin who I was saying earlier he has been very very good maybe the best player in between episodes actually very consistent always delivering has been solid so I'm looking forward to seeing how he develops into the future a little bit further. Orcs there do get a ball back into the penalty area and they have managed to equalize I thought there could have been a foul on the play who scored actually to be fair so either it was going to be a goal there or Tade was about to give away a penalty so not ideal. The guy who scored it, I think he's the league's top scorer. Yeah, 26 goals in 27 games, make that 27 and 28 now. If Orcs there don't get promoted, he must be a player we have to look at next season. Although that would make him the third striker we've bought, and we don't really need any more. Rayan Rave Lawson gets the ball out to Perrin on this near side, and they've put a ball over the top to the league's top scorer, who's now got his 28th goal in 28 games, and this match has completely turned around. Dressing room... I'm going to thrash my arms. What was that? Get your act together. Hopefully that will just G them up for the start of this second half and keep us going until we make a few changes where Lobry gives the ball to Tardeo into Divine who gets his second of the match and his third of the season for the club. The halftime team talk having an instant impact there as we go back on level terms. The gap is back to four points in the table. And I'll be honest, I'd, I'd, I'd take a four point gap at this stage. Especially when they've just scored a third goal, I'll take a four point gap. So we need to get another one. Both teams attacks are doing pretty well, but the defenses are falling apart here. So we might need to make a couple of changes as we approach the 70 minute mark to, to the back line. We haven't really got anyone to bring on other than Brian Con here. I might do that for Batu Binsika to be fair. And then we bring on the 16 year old right back who's actually now 17 years old. So uh, happy birthday to him for the 23rd of January. Ahmed's not doing a great job, neither's Cafro. I'm gonna bring Wadji on for this game. Uh, he can play better on the right hand side. And maybe we bring on a second striker a little bit later on in Brian Moreno. We've got a free kick on the edge of the area. It's crossed into the far post and Tardeu puts it just over from an acute angle. If he'd scored that, that would have been pretty impressive. But we do have another free kick now with uh, Ahmed on the edge of the area, gets past his man, cuts it across and divides actually a shot was blocked I thought how's he put that wide looking for his hat trick it goes off a uh, an Orcs there player 
and it's now going to be put into the middle here. I don't know why he's right in the middle there as like a box threat or a, a headed threat there because he's so small, bless him. But we might have to change things in the uh, in the set piece creator to make sure he's kind of like away from the action because he's not going to win anything in the air. Uh, we are going to go a bit more attacking though. I am going to shout uh, demand more as we need to get ourselves at least an equalizer here because a one point gap here is is very, very tight. And then of course, there's only four points to Bordeaux uh, and then a few points further back to, to Khan and Tois, which they could easily catch us up. If, if we're not a few points further ahead, they could easily catch us up. So we go into the last 10 games of the season and it's a little bit scary, but we might have just saved ourselves a little bit there. Florian Tardeu may have just equalized the game and got us a point out of this with 90 seconds or so to go. It was five minutes of added time added on to the end of this game. That's more than I thought was going to be happening, but it was just enough for us to come away with the draw. Match stats suggest we should have won that game, actually. That is rather frustrating. They had four shots on target and scored three of them. But now we do have a five-point gap to Bordeaux and an eight-point gap to Khan and Toir. So... That feels a bit nicer. As I said earlier, we are due our youth intake at some point in today's episode. Every year in March it comes. Not quite sure when in March, but we're on the 9th of March right now and it's not arrived yet. But it's looking like it could be pretty good here. You know, we've got a four and a half star youth intake, excellent intake. We've got A's for centre-backs, attacking midfielders, strikers, a B for centre-mids. Watch them all come through and be like two star potential players. Oh my word, it's literally here. I just press continue, but 10th of March, it is here. Right. Why have these all got like actual faces? These players should have regen faces. And I'm a little bit confused about that. Yeah, like this guy here, he's got his regen face. That's what they should all look like. But I assume my face pack has not been updated very well and that this regen's ID number is the same as whoever this actual person in real life is. Might not be in the game anymore or they've got a different ID. Anyway, this guy is a, a right back by looks of things, a complete right back, but I think we could make him an inverted wing back. That's what we play on the right hand side. Inverted wing back on support. So he's got some decent attributes for that. However, you know, he's got six crossing, nine dribbling. It's, mm, I was going to say maybe we can make him a, uh, a winger, but he's probably not quite got the pace, acceleration, crossing and dribbling at the young age. You'd need to be a very good winger. But I think the basis of an inverted wing back is there. So I reckon that's what we could try and do with you. Good enough for two levels below us. Could improve a lot. It doesn't really say much right now, but I'd like to think this guy could play League on one day. So he clearly is the very best of the bunch. Then we've got a few players down here who have got four star, three and a half, four star. Okay, there's a few of them we'll look at. We'll look at the four star guys. Again, this guy must have an ID number that's out of date with this regen. That's why he's got an actual face. He's an inverted winger, but actually I think he's going to be much better as a striker. I can see 14 pace. I can see 13 acceleration composure a little bit low but finishing and first touch are fairly decent yeah I think we could do something with uh, with Sekou Kamara I think it could be solid and then the other four star potential player is Alexis Rodriguez another player who's a striker with decent pace composure quite low but dribbling and finishing are pretty good this time we could have some decent strikers for the future at the club. We've got quite a lot of them now. So I don't think I'd describe this as a four and a half star youth intake. I'd say it's normally like a like a three and a half, four star. Because I mean, we've got a five star player, a few four stars in there, quite a lot of three and a half stars as well. Like it's not a bad youth intake, but it's not the very best I've ever seen in my life. Oh, this is not good. Dennis Appiah hip injury out for the rest of the season, two to five months, two to three months of a specialist. But that's the rest of the season for Dennis Appiah. That is very concerning. He, of course, is our very best right back. The next best is the 17-year-old that we promoted earlier on this season. I'm not even joking. The guy we just promoted could be better. He's better in some areas, but actually, yeah, Rayan is, is the better of the two players. So I guess we're forced to start him, really. Saying that, the inverted wing back does seem to use a lot of mental attributes, where this guy, Malamba, does seem to be better, actually. I mean, this is ridiculous, but we are going to move into the season squad to at least be back up. Luckily, we can ease them in with a game against 19th place Bastia. Oh, and Rayan has obviously just played for the under 19s today as well, so he's actually very... Right, well, in that case, Malamba's going to make his debut because he's actually fully fit. And let's just make sure he's registered into the team as well. Oh, so we can't register him because we're not in a transfer window, which seems very bizarre You'd have to do that for your young players anyway. So he actually can't play at all this season for the first team. Right, back down to the under-19s for you then. Briancon, you've got a right foot. You're a centre-back. It can't be too different, surely. Although you've kind of got to play centre-back. 
because Batu Benseek is suspended. I guess Nade can do that. He's got a left foot, but I, you know, it's better than nothing. This is far from ideal, but it's the best we can do. So let's just hope for the best here. Now, this could get quite ugly. So let's just not focus on this too much. And I can explain to you why there was no video on Wednesday. And it's because you may have seen I was all over the news in the UK on Tuesday. But to understand that, we've got to start back at the weekend. And in the weekend, I was in Copenhagen and Sweden, actually. My girlfriend's brother lives in Sweden. So I went to go and visit him, but Copenhagen is, is next door. So I went to go and see the Copenhagen's army between Copenhagen and Brondby. Very good game. Should be out in a video for you next week on the main channel. Very exciting. Came back on the Sunday night, woke up Monday morning and got a call from someone at the BBC and said, Hello, we've seen your channel that you, and that you're a full-time YouTuber. Can we do a little piece with you for uh, Look North, which is like the local news channel in my area? So I said, sure, sounds good to me. Thinking it's just like a little segment for the news at six o'clock and that'll be that. The guy arrived here, filmed me doing a whole bunch of stuff. So there's also going to be an online article as well. And I'm thinking, okay, that's just like a little online article for like BBC News Lincolnshire sort of thing. Won't really go very far, but it's just, you know, cool to do sort of thing. And then I woke up on Tuesday morning and it was literally on the homepage of the BBC website uh, and was exploding on there and on Twitter like quite significantly. And then obviously loads of follow-up articles in different outlets and newspapers and news websites all over the place. It was genuinely mental on that Tuesday. Also, big at Benjamin scoring a goal there, giving us the lead. And I'll be honest, I wasn't really prepared for that. I just thought it's something a bit local, wouldn't really do much or go very far, but you know, there we go. And then the fact that instead it was all over this national press uh, was actually like a little bit overwhelming in a regard when you're not expecting your face to be on the front page of like the national news website essentially. So in a weird sort of way, like that was a very like adrenaline filled day because like everywhere I looked, my face was somewhere and like I was getting messages from people constantly like saying oh I've just seen this and like so I just didn't do anything on Tuesday basically Tuesday was like a write-off in terms of actually getting stuff done as Divine scores his fourth uh, Divine scores his fourth goal of the season anyway Tuesday I was planning to do a whole lot of editing and then recording for this but I didn't do anything in the end and then Wednesday the main channel obviously takes priority to make sure everything is finished for Thursday um which is when I'm recording this now actually recording this on Thursday it will come out on Friday Another episode will come out tomorrow, so we still have that three a week that we're doing at the moment. But uh, that is why everything was pushed back a little bit, because Tuesday was just a, uh, a very crazy day. But again, thank you very much, because it's all thanks to you lot that I get those opportunities um, to talk to press like that and then, you know, get my name out there a little bit more and stuff like that. And I wouldn't be in a position to have that happen if it wasn't for you guys watching videos, subscribing, liking getting divine to score goals even though that one was offside but also i don't know if it's like a bit of a talking point or, or some sort but you know i'm used to being well known in my corner of the internet right we've got this like football manager corner of the internet where i'm well known within this sort of niche and i'm very comfortable with that um in a way so suddenly when it's like way outside that niche and i'm getting messages from people who went to school with and haven't spoken to for like seven eight years you know that sort of extent of stuff like all day and like my face is everywhere like that was like a a level above anything i've sort of had from what i do on youtube so like it was it was definitely like a day out of the comfort zone almost it was very cool looking back on it but you know at the time it was like it was overwhelming so i think that's a bit of a learning thing for me in particular like no matter how big the channel could get I'm sure there's always a level above where it's like, oh, this is this is crazy. This is like, feels very strange sort of thing. And I'm sure that's true for everything in life. So it's just a learning thing, I suppose, from the past few days and something to sort of take away from it. Oh, we've just had a red card. I wasn't looking at the screen. I don't, I don't know what's happened. This is not good because we are really down on defenders right now. And Petro is just now got himself sent off here. We do have a left back on the bench though, which is quite good. So I think maybe Cafaro comes off here. We then bring him into that left back role and maybe actually we go to sort of this formation and bring Moreno on as well. So yeah, that was my week. A very bizarre week for me. Um, so sort of back to normality now, but it, it was fun. It was a good day. It also looks like it's going to be a good day for us in game. Bastia did pull a goal back while I was just rambling on about things. And we have, of course, had a red card, but we have done the business earlier on in the game. And I think we are going to come away here with a 2-1 win. We've got five minutes of added time here and it'd be so frustrating if we 
don't manage to come away with the win here against a team in 19th place in the table. Benjamin in the area, though, does find a bit of space for Mong Kong Dui, who hits the crossbar from, what, like 35 yards out? Very unlucky not to get a goal out of that. We now have another chance on the other side of the pitch. We've got three guys very close. Moroni gets it back to the taker, into Lobbery. Lobbery goes to Mong Kong Dui, but... It's Bastia who come away with the ball, but nothing's happened with it. So hopefully this now means we're going to go on to win the match. You love to see it. Very good with a very makeshift back line there, which was down to 10 men. I'm not sure if it was a double yellow card or a straight red here for Leo. So it's going to be a one match ban, but it might be three. Ahmed got two assists in that game though. I really was not watching that game at all. I didn't realize he was very good. Orcs there also win their game. So they are going four points behind us still. Luckily, we do have two weeks off before our next game so hopefully some injuries get a bit better and we might be able to put one or two injured players back into the team clubs in france set to release youth players uh can we just like offer a trial to all i mean i'll scout them out why not but can we uh transfer offer a trial for like four weeks right now now oh, they've all been accepted that's good so are any of them any good uh four star national that's third division second division second division second division second division third division second division second division he's got five star potential but potentially second division i i feel like we'll learn more about them obviously as they stay at the club a bit longer but i feel like some of these potential abilities seem a bit out of kilter i mean they're probably being let go for a reason they aren't good enough to play in the top division of france but it's always good to sort of keep an eye on some of these guys etienne green is also now classed as a league on player which is very good for us that was the whole point of playing him this season he wasn't the best player that we had in that position but we're now making him the best player in that position with all of his potential ability oh now there's something i've not been telling you and that's the fact that benjamin and i have been having some contract rumblings recently he wants a new contract now and i said wait till the end of the season basically and now he's well, he's considering his options at the end of his contract, apparently. <sighs> Look, we'll just give you a new contract now if you want. Do you want to sign a new contract now? We're not going to agree on this. This is what you want in the first place. Literally what you want in the first place, Benjamin. Look, I hope you reconsider. And he's uh, it's going to stand right. So if we go to offer you a contract now, discuss new contract with agents, we're interested, he's not bothered. Now, the reason I didn't want to give him a new contract right now is because he's still got 18 months on his contract. And although he's 22 years old and he is a good league on player, he's close to his full potential. And if this is the full potential, right, that's not good enough to win as a league earner or a Champions League. So I wasn't really too fussed about it and now he's just kicked off massively. Which is annoying because under current form he probably is our best player. Anyway, VAFC coming up next. This time it's the other side of our back line that is suspended for this game. So let's move Nade over to the left hand side. Or actually take him off completely for, for Batu Binsika who plays on the right-hand side. Brion Kong comes on the left-hand side. We then bring on the 17-year-old at right-back, and then Petra comes off for our backup left-back. Then we bring Nade back onto the bench, and then we just bring... Um, we've literally got no one else to come on the bench because they're all injured or suspended right now. So we'll play with six subs. And so as kickoff is upon us, VAFC are in sixth place right now. They are fighting for a playoff spot. So they are going to be quite difficult to beat, especially away from home. And given our back line is very makeshift today with a 17-year-old right back who shouldn't really be playing anywhere near this level of football and our backup left back playing right now who isn't that great either. It's, it is no wonder that they've almost scored in the 15th minute. We've been very lucky not to concede there. Also, we need to keep an eye out on the Orcs Air game. We're playing at the same time as them for a change. I feel like we've not done that much recently, but they're playing Ajaxio, who are in 12th place right now. Bordeaux actually are not far off either. We need to keep an eye out on Bordeaux, but they might not be far off right now because they might be winning their game, whereas us and Orcs Air are currently drawing. But we'll keep tabs on it either way as Ahmed gets the ball out to the edge of the area where Brian Kong can give the ball to Cafro into Divine, who has scored and was on side. Divine with five goals already. He is looking like an inspired signing. And that brings us to halftime where we are winning 1-0. Auxerre are also winning and Bordeaux are drawing. I don't think we're going to get dragged into a battle with Bordeaux or Twa. I think it's going to end up being us and Auxerre for the title. I think at this stage, if we fall out of the top two, it is because we've had an absolute mare along the way somewhere and something's gone seriously wrong. But you know, drawing games could be the thing that goes seriously wrong. So we could do with a second goal here to make sure we stay 
in front. I think Benjamin was offside there. That's his 10th of the season if it does count, but it won't count. He was just offside. So we still stay 1-0 up. And actually, BAFC have had more shots than us right now, which is a little bit concerning as the second half progresses. Looks like I've got an injured man on the sidelines here, though, as we give away a penalty. I was going to say, let's make this extra man count for now. We can't because a penalty has been given to VAFC. Etienne Green has saved a penalty or two this season, I believe. Can't save that one. And no one on the team is playing particularly well, including Devine, who's even got his goal. Cafro is doing quite well, apparently, but I think changes might be needed. Uh, Wadji is going to come on that right left-hand side. He can play there a little bit, to be fair. Maybe... Desperate times call for desperate measures, and Brea Moreno could be the man to bring on there. Benjamin having a poor game as well, so let's bring Mufek on as well, who is also leaving the club uh, this summer too. So there's going to be quite a lot of change over summer. But with 15 or so minutes to go now, encourage the team. I'm going to get a bit more attacking here. A win would be lovely for us because two points to walks there is a little bit scary. Bordeaux are now winning as well, so we'd only be three points ahead of them. And actually, yeah, very quickly... We actually then could get dragged into third place rather than being in the top two. A goal changes absolutely everything here with only a few games to go this season, which is very concerning. And if we lose this game, well, that is a disaster for us in terms of our title aspirations. Wadji, though, loses possession. No, lad, lad, you're, you're meant to be very good. You're meant to be very good. Lobbery does win the ball back for us, though. Always had a faith in Lobbery uh, as the boys played forward to Moreno who of course has come on, has been replaced by Divine, needs to show me that he needs to get back in this team as Brion Con just smacks one from distance and hits the crossbar. That is... Happened twice in today's episode, actually. 87 minutes on the clock, and it's a corner which has been cleared, but only as far as Batu Benzica. Lobbery shot from distance just over the bar. And that might have been the very last chance we got in this game. I'm going to shout demand more here, but it's done nothing. A draw away from home to a team in the top six, you know, it's it is pretty decent, to be fair. You take it. But that table is now looking awfully close with eight games to go. I'm going to play a few of them off camera, but, you know, maybe we come back for Bordeaux in third place. Maybe we just play those two off camera, come back for Bordeaux and go through to the end of the season. But we should just familiarise ourselves with how the playoffs work. Third, fourth and fifth go into the playoffs. Fourth and fifth then play a match with the winner taking on the team who come in third place. And the winner of that match, as it stands right now, would then play Brest for a place in League 1. So if we don't finish in the top two, there are a lot of games to play to actually try and get promoted.